part of the problem is I think uh, if you go to a junkyard with no former knowledge of what cars are and you had someone try to explain to you that that's exactly how they were made originally, you would be probably pretty confused. Mm. Why are these things here? Why do, why does this thing even not work? Oh yeah, it's got a tire, but like it doesn't go. And I open the door and I pinch my hand in it. I get cut by some rusty parts. Um, boy, this is really weird. People sure design this really poorly. Well, no, that's because over time it broke down because of uh, people design things impro- you know, imperfectly. Well, this universe, we're looking at 6,000 years of sin and mutation and, yep. and death and suffering, and, and we're trying to make sense of it as if uh, it's always been this way. We talked about that a little bit, um, I think, with, uh, with Jay and also with Nate and probably a little bit with Carl, uniformitarianism, the idea that everything's always been the way we see it today. Well, the Bible doesn't say it that way, mm-hmm. nor would that be logical to assume that everything's always gone on the way it is today. Yeah. You know, we talked about uh, animal death. Another response within the Christian community that struggles with this conversation that gets quite hostile is, well, yeah, 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 you got an answer for that one, right? Instead of addressing it and saying, oh, yeah, let me really think about that because the scriptures do. You guys just gave us a ton. And we're talking in context of Christians, right? For you that are um, atheists that, that don't enjoy this conversation, I hope you think about this, that we are challenging people to be consistent um, when they're reading the Bible, but also we, we challenge to encourage you to read that the Bible is consistent from cover to cover. Mm-hmm. You can trust it. Um, so the next, the next response is, well, you know what, what about all the animals? They, you know, they all had sharp teeth, Flynn, Mm. you know, like they all, they clearly like the T-Rex had these big giant gnarly sharp teeth and, and, um, you've got the scorpions that have stingers and, and there's, um, there's plants out there with thorns and we live in Arizona, dude. Everything is deadly here. So, (laughs) so true. Everything just walk around this place, but you've (laughs) got poison, you've got venom, you've got all these different things. Yeah. So what about those? How does that fit in your six day literal creation? Well, you know, the answer has actually become extremely consistent and extremely simple when you go to God's word. We just said in Genesis 131, God said in uh, everything he created, he looked at it, he said, behold, it was all very good. When Adam and Eve sinned in Genesis 3, it talks about how he cursed the ground for Adam's sake. Mm -hmm. Uh, Adam had to work now by the sweat of his brow, which clearly indicates that he had to work before. He was always called, he was always called to work and tend to the garden. I remind the kids that they're, they should enjoy working. It glorifies God, not, not to get weird about it because some, some groups get weird about you know, that there's worship and work. But I'm just saying that we're called to not be lazy and to serve the Lord uh, in what we do with a whole heart. Mm -hmm. However, uh, after sin came in, the ground was cursed. There were thorns and thistles. Things became futile. Uh, Adam, uh, I don't know if anybody's had a garden, you know it's uh, hard to get those weeds out. And uh, the weathers were changed. And then you've got uh, bugs that are there. And in Arizona, under just about every other rock, you've got all kinds of venomous creatures that uh, you don't want to get stung by. Um, you've got, when you're on hikes, you've got to watch out for the diamondbacks and other snakes that are venomous and also um, don't want to eat every kind of berry anymore because of the poison. So where does all that come from? The, the simple answer is sin. Yep. God's judgment upon all of creation. We read it in eight, uh, Romans 8.22 with a reminder that all of creation groans because this isn't the way the world is supposed to work. Uh, part of the problem is, I think, uh, if you go to a junkyard with no former knowledge of what cars are, and you had someone try to explain to you that that's exactly how they were made originally, you would be probably pretty confused. Mm. Why are these things here? Why do why does this thing even not work? Oh yeah, it's got a tire, but like it doesn't go. And I open the door and I pinch my hand in it. I get cut by some rusty parts. Um, boy, this is really weird. People sure design this really poorly. Well, no, that's because over time it broke down because of uh, people design things impro- you know, imperfectly. Well, this universe, we're looking at 6,000 years of sin and mutation and, yep. and death and suffering, and, and we're trying to make sense of it as if uh, it's always been this way. We talked about that a little bit, um, I think, with, uh, with Jay and also with Nate and probably a little bit with Carl, uniformitarianism, the idea that everything's always been the way we see it today. Well, the Bible doesn't say it that way, mm-hmm. nor would that be logical to assume that everything's always gone on the way it is today. Yeah. However, the simple answer is sin. But if you're going to say, well, uh, there's a problem because animals have sharp teeth, that specific one, I had a lady ask me that when I work, used to work at the Creation Museum, and she said, I have a question for you. And she said, well, what about those sharp teeth, those dinosaurs with sharp teeth? 
Mm-hmm. I said, okay, well, what, it, what does that actually tell us? That tells us they had sharp teeth. <laughs> That's all it tells us. And so I asked her and I said, and I've heard plenty of other people say this, I'm not inventing anything new, but uh, when you cut a melon, do you want to cut it with a sharp knife or a dull knife? <laughs> I mean, which side of knife? You ever tried to cut something and you accidentally turn the knife the opposite way on the really flat, dull side, and you're like, sure. oh, whoops, wrong side. I need the sharp side to even cut fruits and vegetables. Yeah. The reason we're having that discussion, if you're not, if you're not sure what why, is because originally God said in his scriptures that he created everything to eat plants. Mm-hmm. So uh, we weren't supposed to eat meat right away because meat. if you had to eat meat, that means you had to kill something. So you have to also understand that in context. So if, uh, by the way, that ties in with our previous question, which we didn't bring that up, but it's an easy one to bring up. If Adam and Eve were supposed to eat only plants, which is what the scriptures say. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to go with what God says, uh, then you have to say, well, Adam and Eve only ate plants. Well, why would God say that? Because there was no death yet. They didn't Mm -hmm. have to. Now, after after the time of Noah's flood, God did give them permission to eat everything. Yep. Uh, so they were then allowed. There was a fear of man that was put into animals at that point. Things changed again. And then Adam and Eve were allowed to eat particular kinds of, an- or not Adam and Eve, I'm sorry, Noah and his family were allowed to eat uh, particular animals. However, um, you know, why, why did they have sharp teeth? Because they had sharp teeth. Uh, we have, I think we have a couple there. We have these canines here. And by the way, if you dig up a skull of uh, particular creatures, like a panda bear, they have extremely sharp teeth. You would never guess that they are mainly herbivores, yeah, right? Exactly. They need their sharp teeth to eat the bamboo because the bamboo is so difficult to chew. Um, so then, well, then why did they then change after that? That's really where the question comes in. Why wouldn't it have just been more logical to say, well, T-Rexes, usually it's the dinosaurs, right? Because we've all been taught that since we're children. There's a reason. The world's so intentional on how they teach us because they want us to have that story. And oh, so. Yeah. The old man loves that story, hangs on to that story. Then we get saved from the gospel, and then we start reading other parts of the Bible, and some of it we're like, oh, I, I don't know about that. But it's a really simple answer. You know, you've got uh, sharp teeth because God created sharp teeth. Go back <laughs> before sin came in. What would they do with those sharp teeth? Well, some of them probably ate plants, right? In fact, all of them ate plants. Well, why did some have sharp teeth and others didn't? Great question. When we get to heaven, you can ask the Lord why he designed it that way. Some people think, well, maybe God knew that when sin came in, certain creatures would use their sharp teeth a particular way. Uh, If I'm being attacked by somebody, the sharp knife that I was using to cut my fruit would now become a great weapon to defend myself because things change over Mm -hmm. time. They don't stay the same. So certain uh, carnivores, maybe over time, used their sharp teeth for a different purpose than what it was originally designed to do. Is that illogical? Nope. Is it unbiblical? Nope. Is it unscientific? Nope. But to say the other way around, right. that animals have always had sharp teeth because they ate meat for millions and millions of years. Is that unbiblical? Yep. Is that unscientific? Yep. It is that illogical? Yep. So I guess you're going to have to decide which one you want to believe. Yeah. And it, and it's I, for me, it kind of feels like nitpicking. It's like, well, we, we just are really clung to this idea. We're really clung to this uh, opinion, and we have to make it work. And so I'm going to argue, God, with you all day long until I'm satisfied in my own thinking. Yeah, I think part of it is nitpicking. Part of it is it's showing that there have been systematic um, building blocks that people have been given to form their story. It's, oh, like, yeah. it's like a puzzle. And once you get the puzzle all together, you see the big picture. Well, if the big picture is evolution, which this really proves the point, because people asking these questions, that's part of their puzzle. And they're trying to figure out, well, how do I take God's puzzle and put it together with the world's puzzle because I've learned the world's puzzle for so long. And so uh, animals having sharp teeth for, for millions of years and being herbivores and carnivores, the way I teach it to my students is, yes, animals today often use their sharp teeth, not always, but often use their sharp teeth as a carnivorous um, uh, pattern because that's how they were, ne- that what they do now. Does that mean that it's always been that way? Right. No. Do I have any reason to believe it's always been that way? No, because I have God's word. Is it foolish to believe that God actually knows what he's talking about and that he can actually help people write down what he's talking about? Absolutely not. Yeah. And then it becomes an issue of whether I'm going to trust God's word 
why can I trust God's word? And that's how I take it with the kids. And I use all of those avenues, the circle of life and uh, the life cycle and all of those things that we talk about. All of those are pieces of a puzzle yep. that kids are taught. And they're taught what they see today is the science of it. Well, wait a second. But if we take the Bible and say, okay, well, they can actually understand what it was in the past based on the Bible. Mm-hmm. And that's what we call a biblical worldview, a consistently biblical worldview. Yeah, I think I think this ties in with the other question as well regarding, um, you know, animal death. Like um, you had mentioned earlier, but I just kind of feel like working this thought out loud. Yeah. That, um, you know, if these, um, if, if God used this naturalistic, uh, process because there's a lot of these comments that say God could have used evolution and how dare you as Christians say that you're limiting God. Mm-hmm. Um, this actually, and there was one, I, I tried to find it um, while we were sitting here talking, but he actually pointed out the person was like, it actually, uh, it actually uh, testifies even greater of God that he would use evolution. And I was like, well, that's a total side conversation. <laughs> I'd love to address that. But the point is why would God not only call it very good with all his death and suffering, right? Right. But why would he create herbivores and carnivores for carnivores to go and eat the herbivores? And these ones only have the ability to just like these animals, right? Like this was clearly destruction that came after uh, an effect like this cause, which is sin, right? Sin is the cause. The effect is, is, um, carnivores, right? Yeah. The survival of the fittest that, uh, that, uh, evolution really likes to embrace. Yep. Um, really you could say, yeah, there is some of that, but what, why would God design a world originally a good God who could do it otherwise? Why would he originally do it? And you know, we can ask that question and it goes back to his character, Yep. but we, we really don't even have to only because we have God's word. Yep. 